Hello Leeds United fans, it's just a quick reaction from myself, we'll do something more in depth tomorrow, we'll do a little bit of an analysis, but I'm here to give you my reaction on the Leeds United draw with Stoke City, it's the last 10, um, yeah, uh, losing 1-0. And the obvious we won't talk about right yet because I'm still absolutely raging with him again. And it's so boring being so knocked off with that one person, but he still gets played. He still gets put on massive, massive uh, critical duties, which he's had again tonight. But let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the selection. Kamara dropped. Somerville dropped. I was, I was excited to see Gruev. Um, obviously the, the new Bulgarian midfield there but maybe that didn't work out I thought Ampadu looked completely off the synergy that him and Kamara had built where Kamara was sort of the, the silky soft smooth operator who'd get forward who'd bypass a press which Stoke were putting on consistently um, and, and you know would be really decent in that midfield alongside Ampadu in this sort of game was left out and Gruev came in for his debut his full debut bizarre from Farker I was really excited by Gruev and I put it out on Twitter but bizarre um, it's good to see the depth we've got. He looks like an efficient footballer, but in this sort of game when Stoke are all about getting the ball wide, getting the full-backs high and swinging the ball into the box. That's that's what they're about. That's what they've been about under Alex Neil. I just thought it was very, very strange that he decided to change up the engine room, the midfield, um, which is such a, a critical, critical point in, um, in, in you know, in any 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 championship side, any any professional football side. Change that up. I thought that was a, a weird decision. I understand he's got to rotate. I get that, but no injury to Kamara, um, and still a really critical game. So, yeah, I thought I thought Jorginho Rutter was 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 absolutely exceptional again. Um, the only person who seemed to bypass a press, the only person who seemed to give Leeds any modicum of quality in that first half. The first half was abysmal, absolutely abysmal. And Leeds started the first half really, really poorly against Norwich as well. We need to not let that creep into our play because you need to start quick in the championship. You, you can't always, you know, give yourself that, that, that we have to get back into it, you know, mode. It has to be, you know, starting on the front foot and, and, you know, winning games from the off and not just sort of relying on those second half substitutions, which I feel we're doing at the minute. Perot was out of the game, completely absent from the game. Um, Nonto, I thought, was was trying, but they, they were doubling up on him. They were pressing very, very high on him. Um, and that first half, I thought Jaden Anthony and Sam Byron were awful. Really, really bad under any sort of press, taking too many touches, not confident in, in, in getting forward or even defending. I thought Byram on that on that left hand side it was his worst game so far this season. Um and it and it just felt very Birmingham y. Uh, you know, the one nil where we just couldn't really get going. The second half leads came out, a little bit more vigour, a little bit more uh how do you put it, a little bit more emphasis on getting forward and being creative and actually believing in themselves a little bit and not just letting Stoke dictate and and, and you know play their game which they were doing all first half, really. Leeds just didn't really lay a glove on them and were lucky to go in uh, nil-nil at the half, in my opinion. Um, Archie did okay, but he, he just looks leggy. He looks really, really leggy. What was he put up against? Uh, Vadigal tonight, one of the best players in the division when it comes to that wing spots. You know, he's, he's, he's done really well this season, scored five goals already at the Britannia, the Bet365, whatever it's called now. Um, but just for me, just exceptionally disappointing, uh, really, really disappointing, and and we can't not talk about you know the second half and and, and obviously Rutter who was was really good, an excellent piece of skill, a real, real good piece of skill, and you know you you, you see obviously James and Bamford and 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 um, James Bamford and Somerville come on. I think Somerville should have started the game. Um, I I don't know why he changes that. I think once again I was praising him being proactive. Um, against Norwich when it came to his substitutions, but you've got a player in Somerville who's going to get in and behind that defence and he's an excellent dribbler and he's in better form at the minute than Nonto. So to change, you know, both your wingers, obviously, and um, your central uh, your central midfielder as well, I thought they were bad choices from Daniel Fakker. I thought he got it wrong, really wrong. But obviously he's going to go to the decision, the penalty decision, which we saw given in the second half, um, it was it was Rutter with an exceptional piece of skill. Ben Pearson, who's always willing to uh, jump in on a foul. We've seen that throughout his entire career. Decided to go in on Patrick Bamford. Bamford gets, uh, you know, Leeds get the penalty. Bamford wins the penalty. And I see Rutter sort of holding the ball. And I know he missed at Salford. I understand that. I get he missed at Salford. 
But I see him holding the ball and thinking to myself, right, okay, I, I really trust him now. You know, he's a lot, he's very, very confident. And, you know, it just felt like it was Rutter's. No one else stepped up, which was a massive worry for me. Like, no confident players. And you see Bamford doing that. And it's just like, you know, the whole, whole side before self thing. It's like, are you actually, do you believe in yourself here fully, mate? And I stood there, right there, right next to the Jaffa Cakes, whilst he was taking the penalty. And I went, why is he taking it? Why is he taking it? Why is he taking it? He's missed, he's missed, he's missed, he's missed all day. Because he's, he's missed his last three. He's missed five out of ten penalties. Why is a player who is so out of form like him in general um, and is on the downturn in his career taking a penalty when we have informed players on the pitch who have got leads into third position and our offensive point is our strongest point. You've got him coming on and without any conviction, like we saw uh, against Leicester last season when he, when he could have essentially won us three points and kept us in the division, it's not solely Bamford's fault, but... A striker not scoring is a big problem and he never scored for Leeds United last season and was hampered by injuries and hampered by form, you know, which, which sort of intertwines with form. Um, sorry, the form which intertwines with goals and assists. And there's no conviction and, and I just don't understand why the guy's on any form of penalty. I'd take all 10 of them in, uh, over Patrick Bamford taking a penalty. I'd have Elan Mele taking a penalty over him. And unfortunately, it's yet another critical moment where Patrick Bamford goes, oh, gives his gives his um his standard body language, unconvincing unconvincingly balloons the ball over, and um, there we go. It's I mean he doesn't even hit the target. Just pathetic in terms of his approach to the ball. It's extremely frustrating because once again it's a Stoke City side where you expected Leeds to at least come and and get something today and. It's, you know, when you're looking at Leicester and you're looking at Ipswich and Leeds keeping up with these teams in terms of if we are going to be in those automatics, you know, there's got, we've got to keep up with them because they're, they're, they are moving at a ridiculous speed at the minute. So if our hope is the playoffs and, and that's what the realistic target is now, then we're going the right way about it. Um, even though we've been in good form games like this, you know, you've just got to, you've got to win because you know what's going to happen. You know, Leicester and Ipswich are going to come here and win. Gutted after that one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'll catch you in a bit tomorrow. We'll we'll do a live stream. All right, see you in a bit.